Hey everybody, welcome. This video is going to go over the octal numbering system. If it's helpful, please be sure to subscribe and like this video. So, octal. So far, we have gone over the numbering systems. Binary and hexadecimal. We've also gone over decimal, which is just normal counting in tens, which you do every day. So binary has a base of 2, hexadecimal has a base of 16, while well, octal has a base of 8. What this means is that there is 8 different symbols that we can use. For binary, there's 2 different symbols. Hexadecimal, there's 16. Just to illustrate this, for binary, you have a 0 and a 1. That means it's a base 2, because you have one symbol, two symbols. Hexadecimal is a 0 through F, which if you don't really know what that means, go check out my hexadecimal video. Octal, on the other hand, though, is a, bi is a, not binary, is a system with the base 8. That means we get the range 0 to 7. So the complete octal dictionary or numbering system contains the the numbers 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 and if we were to count these we would get 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 or oct that's what oct means like an octagon or an octopus or october which is the 10th month of the year that's confusing Anyways, octal has a, ba a base 8, and octal is mainly used to count binary in groups of 3. So this is an example which we could use to convert to octal. So octal and hexadecimal is basically a friendly version of binary that humans can understand easier. Because if you have a long chain of binary, it gets pretty confusing. So let me just illustrate something. So here's some binary, and it's not that long, but if you went on forever, it'd get really confusing. But if we're using the octal system, we could break this up into groups of three, and we could say this is a number, and this is a number. And what I'm going to do next is show you how to know what number this would be. And then we can easily convert to binary from uh, octal. All right, to do this, basically we just convert binary into decimal or octal, but we stop at seven. So basically we make groups of three in binary, and then we just count in binary. If you don't understand how to do this, check out my introduction to binary video. So here are all the possibilities that we can cover using an octal system. And we can easily convert these into octal so the middle is going to be our octal. So this will be 0, this will be 1, this will be 2, this will be 3, this will be 4, this will be 5, this will be 6, and this would be 7. So if we have a binary string, like let's say it's this. Well, we could break this up into groups of 3. And now we have this number, and we have this number. Well, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, this would be 3, 1, 1, 1, that would be 7. So we can represent this using 37. And often, since you don't know if this is octal or decimal, you will have something to illustrate that it is octal, such as an O at the beginning, or a Q, or something like that. So that just kind of depends on the program or what situation you're using it in. But if you used 37, people would think, oh, that's decimal. But it's actually not. It's uh, octal. 
So now we can practice this with a longer string of binary. So let's make it pretty long. So we have this huge strand of binary, and what we can do is first break this up into groups of three. So now we have these nice, easy to, easy to read groups of three. 101 is five, 101 is five, 010, which is two, 111, 7, 010 is 2, 110 is 6, 001 is 1. So now we can illustrate this with, this, with the uh, octal 5527261. It's a little longer than hexadecimal, but it's still more convenient than looking at this huge strand of binary. So if we are not looking at binary and just looking at the normal numbering system, here is how binary works. You would start out with 0, here I'm going to put this up here, and then you go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then you're going to go to that. So basically it jumps from 7 to 8. I know it's a little confusing because you're missing 8, 9, 8, and 9, but because it's a base 8 system, we can't use those extra symbols. So this is actually 8, this is 9, and so forth. So each column as uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 total possibilities, and then we add another digit and we keep going. So when you have a long strand of octal, it's not the same as decimal. So for example, if we have 107, this we can figure out what it is in decimal by using a conversion. So basically we take 7, times 8 to the zeroth power, and basically this is saying we're in base 8 and we're not to the tenths place, so it's at 0. So 7 times 0 to 8 to the 0 is going to be 7. Pretty simple. 0 times 8 to the first power is going to be 0, because any time, anything times 0 is 0. Next we have 1 times 8 to the second power equals question mark. Well, 1 times anything is itself, so 8 times 8 to the second power is 8 times 8, or 64. We add these together and we get 71. So in decimal, this is what we have in decimal. These represent the same number. So this is decimal, this is octal. So you can see it's kind of confusing at first if you're not used to different numbering systems, but if you illustrate that this is octal by putting some kind of sign before it to say, okay guys, this is an octal number, people are going to know that, oh, it's a little bigger than what the actual number is. So if you watched my hexadecimal video, you would know that hexadecimal has a range from zero to F with a total of 16 different possibilities without going to the next placeholder. That means we can actually cover more using the hexadecimal system rather than the octal system when it comes to binary. With, uh, so if we have um, octal over here and hexadecimal over here, octal can go in groups of three, but hexadecimal can go in groups of four. Now, there's a lot of good reasons to use hexadecimal, and there's not so many for octal. So this is because um, bytes, the default size is 8. So you have 8 bits in a byte. What that means is if you have a strand of binary, like this, 
this is considered one byte. A byte contains eight bits. Each one of these is a bit. You can represent four bits using a hexadecimal number. So you could break this up into groups of four and say, oh, this is a number and this is a number. And I still have a chart here using hexadecimal. 0110, 0110 is 6, 1110 is E. So you can represent this strand of binary, 01101110, just using 6E. And you can illustrate that it's um, hexadecimal using an O and an X or something like that. But as for octal, if we have the same thing in binary, we would have to break this up into groups of three, which causes a slight problem. So we break the first thing off into three, the next thing off into three, and then we can just group them like this. But you see, this one has three, this one has three, but this one only has two. So what we'd have, we will, we'll, sorry, I stuttered there. What we would have to do is take the next bit of the next byte or something like that, which gets confusing. So if we're working with a byte size of eight, you almost always use hexadecimal to represent binary because this is not practical because you, um, eight is not divisible by three in there for you get three, six with a left, uh, remainder of two. So if, if the byte size is nine or six or something besides eight, then octal is the way to go. Another use is if you're using a byte size that is uh, divisible by three, such as a 12-bit machine or a 24-bit or a 36-bit machine. That, uh, that way it's divisible by three even if the byte size is still eight. So yeah, those, that's a couple of the problems with the octal system, but it is still used, that's why I'm teaching it. Um, for an example, it is often used for the uh, Unix uh, file permissions. So if you want to learn about that, just look up Unix file permissions using octal, and it's very simple to understand. Um, it will also have some unique uses within some programming languages and so forth like that. So it is important to know, just know that representing binary, it's usually hexadecimal because it's in groups of four and computers are often multiples of two. So you get like 16-bit um, for example. Well, that's four, eight, 12, 16. Easy to use for hexadecimal. Whereas uh, octal, you can't really do that. You get three, six, nine, 12, 15, if you're counting in threes. So that's a problem. So yeah, that is the basics of octal. Hopefully it was helpful. If you didn't really get anything from this, just know that it is a base of eight. It's often used for the Unix file permissions. And yeah, that's about it. Um, basically just try to compare the, the octal to the hexadecimal, the binary, and the decimal numbering systems. And you'll get a general idea of how they all work. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, please be sure to leave a comment. And if you like this video, please be sure to subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you and goodbye.